Well, Scotland just keeps turning it up with these amazing camping spots. I'm gonna spend the next two nights in this Airbnb, I've decided. I'm getting to the point now where uh, the body's just taking a bit of a beating and haven't had too many rests, so I think I owe it to myself. Oh, what a lovely morning. Nice sunny weather again here at Inverness. I'm uh, just leaving the Airbnb now. I'm heading down to Glencoe today, so I'm going to find a place to camp for the night. I think I'm going to stay out by Steel 4, which is uh, somewhere up the Ben Nevis, I believe. Uh, I think that'll be a, a really nice spot to uh, set up camp. And it's not too far from the car park either, so I don't have to lug all my gear too far. Um, but yeah, it was, it was nice yesterday just having the day off, uh, putting the camera down, and you're yeah, not riding the bike and yeah just just chilling out having some food uh went and caught a movie uh yeah it's really nice to relax and uh was definitely required because uh, i was getting pretty uh pretty burnt out to be honest uh had a really good night's sleep last night so i'm ready to ready to get back into it i'm just going to pop to the supermarket first grab some supplies for dinner and then uh yeah down to glencoe two hour drive parked up and packed up to spend the night in Steel Falls. It's not too far of a walk, I think it's maybe about 45 minutes to get up there and I've managed to fit everything that I need for the night in my photography backpack inside and outside it. I've attached a few things to the outside of the bag and yeah just gonna see where I can pitch up and enjoy the waterfall for the night, have a bit of a walk around and yeah should be good. Pretty pretty excited. The Ben Nevis mountain range around here looks absolutely epic so it should be another primo spot for the night. It's a pretty epic waterfall to be fair, um, luckily I'm not stuck in the middle of this one. I've kind of got a, almost a phobia of waterfalls after my last uh, last experience but no this is, uh, this is absolutely stunning and there's lots of places to camp around here, lots of flat patches of grass so yeah it's going to be a good night. So camp is all set up for the evening. I had to wait uh, a little bit until the evening until all the uh, all the tourists cleared off. But um, yeah, what an unreal place. Got Steel Falls just in front of me, surrounded by the, uh, the Nevis Range, which is absolutely incredible. Towering mountains, massive waterfall. I just can't believe the amount of epic places you can camp in Scotland. It's, uh, it's just unreal. It'll be nice having the sound of the uh, waterfall to go to sleep to tonight, that's for sure. Oh, 
7.30 in the morning. Just going to open up this tent and see what this waterfall looks like this morning. Oh, it's a little bit tricky getting a good night's sleep last night because I had a few, few rocks under me. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? I'm kind of tempted to go for a little skinny dip in the, uh, in the river right beside my tent. But I do have some campers across the uh, other side from me who don't look like they've surfaced yet. So, so if I get up now and have a dunk, I think I should be okay. I forgot my swimmers, which is why I uh, want a skinny dip. There are midges around already though, bastards. I can't see anyone over there, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to get my kit off and uh, and have a dip. Well, it's going to be cold. That was so nice and refreshing. Not very deep in there, but uh, and very slippery, but man, that was good. As I packed up camp to continue south, it was beginning to dawn on me that the trip was sadly starting to draw to a close. The rough plan for the day was to take my time and enjoy the scenery as I headed through Glencoe and Loch Lomond for the last time. While stopping off for a hot drink, I met another biker who suggested taking a different route to Loch Lomond to avoid the tourist traffic. I decided to take his advice, but unfortunately, this would result in a very close call on the bike. So uh, I just had a bit of a whoops there, went off the road, um, didn't have it on camera. Luckily there was a few people to help me get the bike out of the ditch because basically I came round the corner, I was pretty tired, wasn't really paying enough attention and there was a loose bit of gravel. I wasn't going that fast um, but it just threw me off. The gravel was in the centre of the road and um, yeah just ended up going for a Bit of a uh, bit of a ride through the ditch, and uh, yeah, the bike dropped, and I just uh, I just jumped off. So yeah, there's not there's not really that much damage from what I can see. It's just a bit of a scratch on the uh, engine cover there and the crash bars. I'm not sure if the steering might be a bit out, but yeah, hopefully hopefully the alignment's not out because that would be a a bit of a pain. But uh, yeah, I'm just having a bit of a a breather for ten minutes just to. Uh, just to calm down a bit and then I'll, uh, yeah, I'll carry on up to Lomond and yeah, try and find a place for the night. So I think, uh, I think the bike feels all good. It does feel slightly odd on the handlebars, but I'm not sure if I'm just overthinking that or, or if the steering is maybe slightly out of line. Uh, but I think it's okay. I'm just gonna, yeah, just take it nice and easy. And uh, yeah, if it feels like there's a problem, I'll uh, give the boys at BMW a call and we'll try and uh, jack up a little, uh, a little repair somewhere. After half an hour of riding, I decided the bike was going to be okay. So I continued my journey to Loch Lomond to find a campsite for the night.
The next couple of days were spent making my way down to Galloway Forest Park, where I'd stayed earlier in the trip. There was a wild camping spot I discovered there three years ago that I wanted to try and find again. to the sad realisation that today is the last day in, uh, in Scotland. I'll be crossing the border into Shrewsbury today. Uh, I'm going to meet up with some of my Nana's relatives that live down there, so that'll be really nice. Um, I'm guessing I'll probably stay the night around there. And yeah, last night I spent the night in Galloway Forest Park. I found a little road that I visited a few years back when I did Scotland on a motorbike. I managed to recognise it off the main road and yes, yeah, next to a nice little stream. So you yeah, spent the night there, tried to get some photos of the bike, which was a bit of a disaster because uh, I was just getting raided by midges. But you're yeah, reflecting on the trip, it's been, uh, it's been absolutely amazing. The bike's been fantastic. Uh, the scenery has just been unreal. You know, I've wild camped in some of the best places in the world by far. Met so many cool people along the way as well. And yeah, so it's a sad day, but it's also a bit of a relief at the same time because, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty burnt out at this point, pretty knackered. Um, I've got a few days off when I get back home, so I'm gonna put the feet up, have a beer, have a takeaway. Looking forward to it. Sometimes it's not until the end of the trip where the experience starts to properly sink in and you realize how amazing the ride has been. I'd seen some incredible places over the last few weeks. Travelling by motorbike and wild camping allowed me to truly immerse myself with my surroundings, giving me access to some of the UK's most remote and stunning locations. Although there were some hurdles along the way, they always make for good stories and provide valuable lessons for the next adventure. So I'm on the way back to Brighton today and uh, it's the last day of the journey so a bit sad but um, I've stopped off in Erdisland which is where my nana grew up so it's where she was born and where she lived when she was younger before she moved to New Zealand um, and apparently there is a bench here uh, that has her sister's name uh, Philly, Philly Olison on it so uh, I'm going to have a, have a look around and see if I can find that. Not that one. Nope, not that one either. No name on that one. Nope, not that one either. I think it might actually be in the church grounds. So let's head down there and see if we can see it. Alright, let's see if it's let's see if it's this one. Oh, I think we're in luck. That is it. Phyllis Annie Olison. My nana sister. That's uh that's really cool. It's even got the birth date and the and the date of death in New Zealand as well. That's really nice, I'm glad I found that. I'll uh nip back into into the village and uh yeah, grab myself a drink and a bite to eat and uh park myself on the bench for ten minutes or so. So I've got myself a flapjack and a lemonade. That'll do the trick. Just gonna, uh, yeah, chill out on the bench under the trees and have a, uh, a moment in peace. <laughs> 